You see this? Even this. You say, oh, that's just a piece of who knows what. Well, I'll tell you what, I know what it is. It's life. You see that red? You see that black? It can grow there all by itself. That is a vein and an artery. And this has... It, I, I, there's a process here. And it's a transitional process where the gooey stuff of life, the organics of life, sublimate out. It's called sublimation. And you, it's the same thing they do with activated charcoal. They take activated charcoal, they burn it off, in the, not in the presence of oxygen. They burn it off and they blow off all of the organics, the volatile organics. They go away. Guess what you have left? Carbon, <laughs> the activated carbon, guess what it is? It's the cells of creatures. Those are double-layered carbon bags. And they contain organic matter until they are vaporized of it and, and in this process. And then you have these tiny little carbon bags. Literally, I'm not I'm exactly what it is. They're cellular. Because what this stuff is, it's, it's the remnants of life. It's the, uh, you make it with wood and stuff. It's, 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 just, it's the cells. It's the cells that are left over. They're membranes. And they're bags. <laughs> and when they die, they explode. And they put a little hole in there and then you blow out all of the organics and now you got a, and I'm talking bazillion trillion gazillions of them of bags with little tiny holes in them so now you flush water through that think of what's going to happen it filters through there and all these bags pick up all the little particles and now another thing to consider is that water H2O is one of the smallest molecules there is it's got it's high, uh, H2O it's two hydrogens and an oxygen now you got two hydrogens as a one uh, proton each and an electron each and then you got an oxygen a very tiny molecule and it's also polar and all these things there's a lot of things going on here. but anyway we'll just go over all this stuff one little bit at a time there's like I said it's gonna be a ramble I'm not gonna get worried about any special you know lesson plan or any silly thing like that we're gonna look at things and see what they look like like this is olive you see that? You show that to a uh, 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 geologist, you know, you say, oh, I know what it is, it's olive And they well, yes, you're right, sir. But what was it before? You know what it was? It was a tendon. There's olive and plagioclases in here, schists and things. You see the outside of this? You know what they say? Oh, I know what it is, it's chromatite. I said, well, yes, it is, sir. That's the name you made for it, but that is not. <laughs> what is it? Well, it just all came together, these little fibers. I know, I don't think so. Absolutely incorrect. What that is, is fascia. So, it, my point is, is what I'm going to do, and because I said, everything, in, in, every single rock I have here is a product of life. These are not just something that are rocks and dirt and things came together. These are, <laughs> this is meat. That's a piece of meat. A literal piece of meat. And that is exactly what it is. It's a piece of meat that's petrified now. And and I know exactly how this process works. I've been doing this a long time. Long, long time. You see that yellow? That is so cool. There is so much to talk about there. That is the transition between muscle and tendon. There's a there's a gluey spot. It's this is just so bizarre. When I show you this in the microscopic shots of my huge muscle t tendon assembly it, it'll blow your mind you got all these little muscle fibers which is you know your biceps or whatever we're doing this work now what happens at the end it turns into a, a cord that comes down and, it, and a ball that goes right into your bone <laughs> and this is where it breaks every single time they break off at that little and when you see this in a microscope you are gonna flip because it's it's literally it's literally a, a, a bar it's a bar of goo now and this is something else that I'll show you here because what it is is that those are our tendon emplacements that I'm talking about and they have a tendon strap this is this this I think this is a, 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 well it got incinerated or it's a meteorite I have no clue but anyway the, the the strap comes down tendon balls insert into your bones and they have a strap on them that strap ends up going up to a muscle I mean just that's the way it works everybody pretty much I think knows this now the strap comes down it goes into this ball you see that ball right there see that circular ball you see that little stem coming up this would have gone right over like that 
and it would have been sitting just like this and it would attach to a muscle and you'd pull yourself back and forth like that I mean of course the old one anyway you understand the process you got the strap coming this got incinerated and I think it might have got I think this might be a meteorite because I see these things uh, looking on the internet look just like this and it's burnt there's no question she's burnt but now and I don't understand the architecture either uh, other than it could very well be a meteorite but I can't say that at all but you see this here I see meteorites that have the palisites they call them identical literally identical to this ball and red goo all over any re-entry makes this iron oxide iron turn into you know it smelts it anyway that's what that's what this and now there's another thing to talk about with asteroids and, and um hold on i got little bitty ones around here somewhere i think this is a little bitty one i, I don't know if this is or not but my thinking is, is that when they come through the atmosphere, and if they're little bitty ones, I don't think they're going to pick up enough heat to destroy everything that's inside. Because this is a little tiny lung, like a chipmunk lung or something. I have no clue what it is. But I'm almost certain it's a lung. And this is what will happen. As they come through, they get hot. And as they get hot, they, they more or less smelt. Now, this is not mud or anything in here. That's been cleaned very well. That's that's iron oxides and I'm almost a hundred percent sure that if I cut this open and I will probably at some point because uh, I'm kind of a brutal archaeologist or whatever you want to call me I'm really not much of anything but uh, I'm brutal <laughs> anyway um, I think this thing here will have life in it I mean they all have life in them but what's left I don't know when it comes through the atmosphere does it burn itself off I have no clue I don't know but I do know that I have a lot of things to be looked at. And, you know, they call this a chondrite. You know, those little dots on there, those aren't chondrite. That's the, what that is, uh, those are the pores of life. Yeah, see that little holder? You look at that with a microscope. That's a blood vessel. And it's black and, and, and red on all of these things. You look at this, look at this rock here. Hold on, I got one here that's just insane. Yeah, look at this. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see these things. I'm hoping you'll be able to see them. But like I say, it's always red and black. And the red blows out of the arterial side, which is an open tube. The vein side clamps off because that's the way the body's built. It won't let the bad blood go back in. So you end up with a red and a black. That's it going in, coming back. Red going in, black coming back. Now, it blows out on the ends. See, the, if you ever saw my logo of um, the hand with all of those little blood vessels, it's so saturated on your hands. That's why they poke a little hole and bloop, the blood blows out. Well, additionally to that, because of the compression of all of the gases in your body exploding out, it shoots it out of the arterial ones, and they blow out the end, and then they leak all over and turn into, guess what? garnets as garnets and I have them in other things too that are there's no question they're garnets uh, I can't find you know I have a little finger around here somewhere that has all the garnets in it but um, and then I have other stuff like this right here you see that that is what's called an apical tuft look it up on the internet apical tuft a-p-a-c-a-l tuft that sits on the tip of a finger, on the tip of a finger. So, and this, I'm sure, is human, because that's all I'm finding here. That is on the tip of the tip of a finger. Now, I'll show you a fingertip that is actually a fingertip that was DNA tested, that was CAT scanned, and is 100% DNA tested, CAT scanned. And when you look at it in the CAT scan, you can see the fingernail bed. I have another one that it is, you know, the, the fingerprint would be on this side. Now, you know, you could see some very faint remnants of it. I have one that is so pristine that it is better than the human fingerprint on your hand. And guess how big that is? <laughs> it's about 30 inches wide, one fingerprint. And I have it here somewhere. Uh, here it is right here. 
Now, I can't, I mean, obviously, I can't get the whole thing back here. I went out and tried to take some pictures of it. Now, here's what it is right here. Now, this is going to be kind of hard to see. You see this here? <laughs> this is so freaking enormous that this, in a human being, relates to about an eighth of an inch on a corner where it rises up on your finger and then starts to go into the fingerprints. Look, look at this. Now, here's where we got to do some adjusting of the light. Hold on a second. <clears throat> now, uh, it's kind of you see, you see how that, that's, that's the edge of the hand. This has been DNA tested. We broke this open, went inside here, there's a couple little tiny holes up in here. We got in the DNA out of there. We had it tested, and it's 100% human DNA. Absolutely, there's no question about it. And the fingertip is so exactly flawless. Now, you see why one side is a little different color than the other? I did a little test on this. What I did was I put some, uh, I etched this a little bit with acid and stuff. This is like, this is not, not going anywhere. This surface, if you can see the little black dots, I don't know if you can, but if I put this on the microscope, you'd see them quite easily. That is what's called silicon carbide. And that is almost as hard as diamonds. And your skin, and the skin of this thing, obviously, was coated with um, uh, 50 times more silicon in the skin. And this is the thickness of his skin. And I mean, this stuff here, oof, I, when I touch it, my hands start to tear up. It's unbelievable. Now, this is his fingertip, fingerprint. Now, I took the, and, and what it is, in a, on a normal fingerprint, you've got like this and this, and then in between them, you've got these little blocks, and they have a dot in each one, and this is exactly identical. Now, you, but you, you can see how it, it's almost like somebody glued a fingerprint right on that thing. And out there, I, I took some, see it? See this dot here? And that dot there? And this is the fingerprints right here. And in between them, there's a block and a block and a block and a block and a block. And that is exactly what is in a fingerprint. It's been DNA tested, so it's, I'm, not, I'm not telling you anything that's uh, silly. Uh, and they and, and I'll show you the whoops I'll show you the video of the the biggest part of it. It's so big I can't move it anymore. I, I, I moving all these rocks. I tore my rotator cuff. I just had surgery well six months ago, but I tell you it takes a long time to recover from that. Anyway, I can't move that big thing and it's frozen in the ground. But I took a picture of it and it shows the fingernail on the top. Fingernails fractured, but on the other side is that flawless fingerprint. I mean, it is so flawless it's unbelievable. I used to be able to move that thing years ago, but I can't do it anymore. It's starting to fall apart. This is a, a palm that I'll show other pictures of, but it's all falling apart. Stuff's been sitting here for years. And I don't know how you, well you can see that, but that pile there is from uh, a um, addition I had done. It was about twice that size. I got everything I'm showing you out of that pile. Well, not everything. There's a, a whole batch of... Uh, stone walls I'll show you in a minute. Alright, these are the stone walls all over the place up here and I went through them all and picked all the good stuff up and what's left here. I filled a 200 foot day drainage ditch that went all the way down the front with stuff that was left over from what I was picking through.